Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. I've often considered the garage here to be my own little world, but now I actually have my own little world within the garage. So I'm here at another one of my favorite surplus stores, the University of Minnesota Reuse Center. We're gonna go in and pick up something really cool. We have part one of this package. I don't know if it'll actually fit in the car. And I definitely got a deal. This was originally $1,000 used and it just never sold. So I got it for under 200 uh, with all the taxes and fees. And that travel case is probably worth $200 and it does just barely fit in the car. Forgot I have all this dumpster fence that I found in the trash the other day, so I'm gonna move that around. And the second one is not as big, but it is much heavier. All right, let's see what the heck is in here. All right, so this one is our Gould communication sphere. I mean, our, our dome projector thing. Yeah, we do have some damage here. It's like somebody shot it or more likely dropped it. It's definitely got a few little scratches and dings on it, but nothing terrible other than the one hole here. And we just put that on the back side of it. And this case has all of the guts of the operation. So we have a little toolkit. That's nice, although it's, it's really gooey, so that's kind of gross. We have a laptop to run the system. On the plus side, I don't think they've wiped the hard drive on this. On the minus side, it's Windows Vista, so ew. I don't know what's grosser, Windows Vista or this suspiciously sticky capsule. This looks like the base. There's also this lens unit over here, and then a bunch of cables. The projector base. That has a mirror down in there. Then we have this massive fisheye lens that goes in here. Yeah, that is like the world's biggest hotel door peephole. And this also has sticky stuff on it. I don't know how they do that. It's just a regular video projector in here, so nothing too crazy. I actually have to bolt the lens into the globe first, and then I can pop it onto here. And this is probably how it got damaged. It's pretty unwieldy. I'm sure somebody just dropped it. Someone managed to drop this laptop a few times too. Fortunately, the laptop has been upgraded from Vista to Windows XP, and I am absolutely not connecting this thing to the internet. For one, it's Windows XP. It's got Internet Explorer on here, it is unpatched as far as I know, and basically anything that you connect with Internet Explorer and XP just gets instantly hacked. Number two, I suspect this has some kind of licensing or DRM, and I don't really want to be talking to this thing's servers until I figure out if I can actually use it. We definitely don't want to update anything right now, because if it works, Updates have a habit of breaking things on older systems like this with obscure software. Yeah, I'm getting something, but only on half the screen. And it tells me I need to replace the lamp. I am just going to ignore that for now. Well, we've got something working on this side, but only on half the globe. Fortunately, there's some documentation in the files on the computer here. I looked on this company's website and there's not really much on there other than marketing fluff. So if you actually want to use the thing, you have to have the original documentation. Looks like there's an alignment procedure and some test patterns. This is all very confusing. I don't know how the alignment on this got so screwed up. It's like somebody dropped this unit too. I, at this point, I have to assume everything in this package was just thrown down a flight of stairs. I'm really glad I didn't pay $1,000 for it. I've tried just about everything to get this image aligned and it is not lining up. I'm wondering if there's a setting on the projector that's actually screwed up and they did not include a remote for the projector. And this is the front of the screen. So I have to run around to the back, mess with the settings, run around to the front, try to read what the settings are. This is gonna take all day. Maybe some progress on this. We've gotten the projector to cover the entire thing and we've lost that black circle that was on this side, but we're no longer getting anything from the computer. So it's like the display two has stopped working. All kinds of problems with this thing. The computer seems to have decided there's no external monitor anymore. It seems to be working a little bit better. Uh, we have the computer output over here. My problem was using that newfangled HDMI nonsense. It came with an HDMI cable. I should have just used good old VGA. That always works. All right, it's still a lot brighter on this side, but I think this is technically the front, so I think that's actually okay. You're supposed to face this side towards the kids in the classroom. That's a little disappointing. I was hoping it would be a full 360 sphere, but I guess this is okay. All right, this is it. This thing is working. It has to work in a completely dark room, but 
I think the projector bulb is on its last legs, so if we got a new bulb, we might be able to get a little more brightness out of it. I'm just going through some of the sample data on the computer. Okay, so this is pretty amazing right here. I know it's not live satellite data. It would be really cool if we could do live satellite data on this and if we could overlay actual satellite imagery as it came into my antennas. That would be cool. But this is a great way to demonstrate satellite coverage, day-night cycle, orbits, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, I could see myself using this globe in future videos as a learning tool, because this thing is fun. Oh, we can also do Mars. Oh, that's cool, and that actually shows how a polar orbiting satellite goes over and collects data. So, this is relevant to the NOAA weather satellites that we look at here on Earth, but this one is specifically for Mars. So, that is another really cool demonstration that just illustrates how some of the satellites work that I look at on a regular basis on this channel. I'm going to go through the whole solar system here. We can do the Sun, we can do Venus, Jupiter. Everyone loves Jupiter. Sadly, we can't do Saturn's rings, but we can do Saturn's cloud cover. That's kind of cool. I don't know if you can even see that with the lights on in the garage, but we've got constellations and star patterns. We have some cosmic microwave background imagery. This is something I would like to capture with my own radio telescopes in the future. Um, for now, I just have to look at the NASA data, but this is something that we could play with maybe someday. It's really hard to show this and show me with the light balance of the garage. I've got windows I can't really shut off. I've, I've turned off basically all the lights and it still looks funny, but uh, yeah, eventually we might have to move this somewhere else so it looks better. Now, we supposedly have real-time weather data and earthquake data. However, I still have not hooked this up to the internet, so yeah, we can't get actual real-time data on it. Got uh, biosphere data, and I could speed up and slow down these animations. These are all still just in demo mode. This one's kind of cool. It's lightning data. Again, this would be fantastic if I could tie this in directly to the NOAA and GOES weather satellites. I could show actual live satellite images right on the globe here. I would have to combine all three geostationary GOES satellites, but um, yeah, that could be something really cool. If some clever programmer out there has an idea for how I can do live science on this, please let me know in the comments. I know there is a NOAA and NASA Science on a Globe project where you can have something like this in a museum in a science center and you can get live data. Not 100% sure if this one is compatible with it, but that could be something fun. Okay, I was joking around with an animator friend that we should do a big blinky eyeball on this, and it already has a big blinky eyeball. That is just disconcerting. There's even a fishbowl setting. It even has a massive snow globe setting. It's like they thought of everything. Are you ready to hack the planet? And it has these crazy 3D VR movies or immersive fisheye movies. I don't even know how to describe this, but uh, that's neat. This would be a fun way to display footage from a 360 cam. There's actually a ton more stuff on the computer. There's sea surface temperature, there's El Nino research, auroras, climate change, earth science energy, yeah, NOAA lesson plans, Smithsonian stuff. I'm not even sure how to load some of this stuff into the uh, Storyteller program, so we'll have to keep playing around with this. Now, somebody asked if I can just play arbitrary videos onto it, like, can I play YouTube on the Sphere? Hi, welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel, where I clearly have a globe problem. I 3D printed a whole bunch of little miniature satellites. All right, so it kind of works, but it's upside down. And when I try to flip it over, um, that actually maxes out the poor old computer here and it can't handle inverting the geometry of the video. So uh, yes and no, it will play videos, but not super well. All right, so this thing is pretty darn awesome. I think this was well worth $200. It wouldn't have been worth $1,000, the original price that they had on the label, but $200? Yes, this is a fantastic investment, even for me to just sit here and watch it all day long, even if I never use it again in another video. But I think I'll be able to use this in some videos because this is a fantastic way to illustrate a lot of the stuff I talk about. Weather patterns, satellite stuff, climate change, global systems. This has all of it, and this is just really, really cool. Again, I would love to do some custom things with this, like grab my incoming satellite data off of my dishes from the GOES weather satellite, from NOAA weather satellites, Meteor, MetaUp, and paste that right over the top. If I could do live incoming data right over the top of the globe here, oh, that would be fantastic, especially if I could get other people's data because my antennas can only see so many passing satellites, and it would be really cool to get other people's data from around the world. Yeah, there are some really cool possibilities with this. 
that are again beyond my ability as a programmer. So if anybody out there is interested in trying to do a project like that or help me with a project like that, uh, definitely let me know in the comments or shoot me an email. I can't promise that I will have time to actually get to it this month or even this year, but it's something that I would love to do and it would fit right in with all my other satellite nonsense. Now I do also have to find a place for this to live. It's fairly big, it takes up a lot of space. My garage here is full of junk. I don't want it to live in the garage, it'll just get more damaged than it already is. And I don't know if I have space for it in the house. I'll have to think about that. Maybe I can carve out a spot in the basement or some other place where this can live and um, be just a really cool conversation piece, scientific instrument or display instrument. It did take several days to get this thing calibrated and configured to the point where it's actually working, but now that it's working, I can't stop looking at it. I can't stop talking about it. So I could go on and on about this thing forever, but I think I am going to wrap up the video. I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for um, helping me buy stupid things like this, helping me afford random spur-of-the-moment purchases. When this thing popped up online, I thought, I just have to have this. And Having that Patreon support really helps with things like this when they pop up out of nowhere. If you'd like to help support the channel and help me get weird things like this, I will put a link to my Patreon down below and you can jump over there. And of course, it always helps the channel if you could like and subscribe. That definitely helps me grow and make more videos in the future. Finally, thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.